Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our brand new food show on Independence Live. My name is William Thompson, and I'm the executive director of Independence Live in charge of most of our content. But I'm not the most important person on tonight, that's for sure. I'd love to welcome our resident chef, Wendy Barry. Good evening, William. Good to be here. Thanks very much for joining us live tonight. So just to let the audience know, we've got Wendy who's going to be uh, watching the chat um, as, we are, as we're all watching uh, Wendy's uh, video. Um, rem rem remind me again, Wendy, when did you do the recording for what you're cooking for us tonight? About a week ago, so I can still remember what I did. Um, you have, <laughs> well, you well you've got a video to watch as well, so that should help. You'll have to bear with me on my first time out here that I don't muck up the technology, but I'm fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we'll be fine, I'm sure. It'll all be nice to me. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've got um, around about 20 minutes. Um, uh, do you want to tell us the two dishes that you're cooking for us tonight? I'm doing a, a shellfish dish and a cullen skink, a good classic uh, Northeast favourite. Has it, and, and, and it was my it was I asked you to do the Cullen skink, didn't I? <laughs> so thanks very much for doing that. Uh, well, we've got um we've got we've got Sandy who's watching from uh, Cromdale. Um, so Hi, thanks Sandy. very much, Sandy, for joining us. Any questions? And please do uh, drop them to Wendy uh, when we get started. Before we see you in the kitchen, uh, Wendy, I just kind of I, I'd love to know if is food something you've been interested in all your life or is this something that kind of just happened that you had this interest in uh, with 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 cuisine well i think we all have early food memories and in fact i'd love to hear some of yours um and mine is about eating scottish tomatoes at akko tabui when i was about four um eating pancakes that granny made that uh, she would keep under the tea towel to keep them warm when they came home from school and i think i turned my hobby into my career that that really sums it up and what i burn for is the producers and the, the chefs that use the produce yeah you, you're so lucky when you get to do the things that you love as your job aren't you yeah for sure I, I remember I, I live in I live in Barcelona and, and you know we've discussed on numerous times about our different attitudes to to, to food um, but I remember just when I came here um, I got an orange from a tree that was on the on the high street and I opened it up and it just kind of tasted like summer you know mm -hmm. and I, I really hadn't tasted anything like that for probably about 15 years since I took strawberries and berries um off the bushes in Scotland so it can have that really emotive feeling can't it you know when you when you have a little bit of food that just kind of brings so so much back to you and um, from your childhood memories and yeah. um, we'll see if anyone does want to chip in with their um memories of food and I know you, you're kindly doing this for us, like everyone who's involved in Independence Live on a volunteer basis. So the first thing that Kevin asked me to say to you was thanks so much uh, for your support for the, the the channel. Can you tell us a little bit about the Scottish Food Guide? Because I know you're involved in, in various other things. Well, um, I... I'm a professional cook and at one part in my career I was chief inspector for a national food guide and there was always this brinkmanship you know some things you liked about it and some things you didn't and so when I left I never really envisaged starting my own guide but I think I just got so frustrated I just had to start my own guide and um, so Scottish food guide was the result um, places to eat uh, the lovely produce all the recipes that we're doing on the show um, will be posted on scottishfoodguide.scot so you'll find the recipes there um, and, and we've got a link to that in the um, the description below so great. you can click on that to see the the recipes super um, so it's been going 20 years now and it, it really is my baby and it's lovely that people enjoy it and uh, follow it and find um, chefs, find producers, producers find chefs and of course the consumers all use it as well. So so that's that's my little mothership with um, Scottish cheese trail and Scottish farm shops as um, little children off the main one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, I'd really encourage everyone to follow the links and check out the recipes, but also look at all the other wonderful things uh, that Wendy does. Um, uh, we've got another viewer who's joining us from Largs. Welcome to Largs. There you go. And can Thanks I just so say much. there's no banner advertising and no public money involved? Just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> fantastic, yes. Definitely worth worth mentioning. Um, I, I, I watched your um, uh, video obviously when you sent it through and then I watched it again when I was doing the editing and there was something that can that I really that made me think about the difference between 
um, uh, the Scottish attitude to food in general and the Spanish and Portuguese attitude. And as I said earlier, you know, it's, it's very different living here than, than living in Scotland. And you mentioned a fish. Um, I can't remember the name of it. You said there was a fish that was landed in Scotland, but almost mm. all of it is shipped off to Spain and Portugal. What was the fish? It was razor clams that we call spooks. Razor clams. Yeah, yes. we see so them. We see them long, like a foot, like a comb size. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and they were being landed in um, Pitt and Weem and Anstruther, and the divers were taking them straight off to Portugal. Um, if I hadn't been on the pier at the time, I wouldn't have got any for my tea. Mm. <laughs> and I, I remember my dad catching. I remember my dad catching them. Um, mm. I think he used them as bait. I think when he was when he was sea fishing. But I remember seeing them. But th does that tell us anything about our attitude to seafood? That this wonderful food's coming in off our coast and then not being consumed by people in Scotland and heading off to the continent. Absolutely. I was doing some um, food styling for food photography up on Orkney um, a few years back and the packaging for the velvet crabs being landed was only in Spanish. They weren't even doing it in Scots or English for that matter. Um, so I think we're generally a bit conservative um, and, you know, we like our fish, fish supper on a Friday night and some of us are a little bit more exploratory and I hope to encourage some more to be so tonight. Um, but we, we could do so much more. We have such fantastically clear waters and great shellfish. Um, and I think also some people are like your dad. You know, I know people who wouldn't eat something because they used it as bait. <laughs> so you're you're right. There's, there's those connotations as well, but they're delicious. Yeah. I often remember my dad cooking tripe as well and eating it. So, so, so that pushed me. I, I thought he was actually, um, uh, you know, doing something with like a cloth. That's what it looked like. He looked, you know, putting domestic in and a cloth or something. It just looked so weird when I was a kid. Um, but he absolutely, he absolutely loved that. But you know, it's, there's so many more foods that hopefully we're going to investigate um, as we go through this series with you cooking. But you know, we're really delighted that you're here, and I certainly think starting with the sea. Um, it was a really, really good place to start. Uh, will we get into the video then? Let's go for it. Great. Okay, well, as I said, to anyone who's watching, Wendy is with us live. So any questions about the recipes or any food or Wendy in general, I'm sure she'll be delighted to answer them. And I hope you enjoy our little video for you. Welcome to Scottish Food Guide HQ in Fife. And today we're talking fish. So I've got two lovely fish recipes for you. And uh, the first one is a cullen skink, by special request, I might add. And cullen skinks are wonderful. It's a, a soup from the Aberdeenshire coast, from the wee town of Cullen. And traditionally, it would have been made with a finnan haddie. And this is a finnan haddie. So here you are, your, your, your haddock with your thumbprint on it. And it's whole and gutted, bone in, skin on. And it's a beautiful cold smoked fish. Really, really delicious. Um, a little bit fiddly, I have to say, because you have to cook it in advance to get the bones out. But what you, what you lose in time, you gain in flavour. So it is worth the effort. But if it's a Tuesday night and you've got to pick someone up from football and you're trying to get everything else done, then you can cheat a little bit and use one of these cold smoked haddock cutlets. Um, but please don't use the bright yellow ones that look like traffic lights because they're dyed and that's not so nice. Go for the natural colour. So traditionally the Finnan Haddie, which would have dated from the 17th century, um, really old ancient tradition, part of Scotland's food culture. But um, if you can't get it, um, we got ours from Douglas Murray in Inverkeithing, fantastic fish shop nearby. Um, but you'll, you'll always be able to pick up the, the little smoked haddock, so the choice is yours. So what you do is you first of all, in the case of the Finnan Haddie, you have to cook it first. So poach it in about 450 mils of milk and take it out. You can use the draining slotted spoon and um, take all the bones off. Um, and then here we are all together, beautiful flaked Finnan Haddie. Really delicious. I had difficulty to keep my mitts out of it when I was doing this. Um, but if you are having a little shortcut and using the other one, it can be popped straight in the pan because it's boneless. 
and I'm all fishy. So just give me a wee minute here. So in the pan already, I've got some leeks and they happen to be muscle brow leeks which grow beautifully in our garden and uh, they're a traditional Scottish variety and we seem to be able to grow them very well. So I've put them in the pan here with a little bit of chive butter and also some potatoes diced because they need a head start. So here we have it with the potatoes and the um, chive butter and the leeks and a bay leaf in there as well so it's nicely infused and in fact I might take the bay leaf out now because I'll forget so I'll just do that right now. <laughs> so that's going back on the cooker just to simmer away and we're going to add the, the fish next. So that's the potatoes are softened so in goes our fish, this lovely cooked haddock so it doesn't take very long now the soup is nearly done the potatoes are the only thing that takes time. At the same time we add back in the milk that it was cooking in so it's the warm milk from the cooking liquor so it's a lovely fish stock now we we'll pop that in as well all of it like so now because you're using a smoked fish it doesn't need any salt because they're already brined so just be careful with the salt it's usually salty enough but we can add some lovely black ground pepper Always nice to have some more pepper in there. And it really just has to heat through. It's looking, looking the business, really looking delicious. So I'm going to pop that on, on the ring here. Put the lid on, let it cook away a little bit. So a couple of things. Um, this you might wonder about this cooker that I cook on in this house. It's a Swedish cooker. If you've watched any of these Nordic Noir, you're sure to have seen them popping up in various uh, murder mysteries. They're called a Vedspis, they're a log stove, and uh, it's all fueled with logs, which go in here. And it's incredibly um, efficient. So this is the really hot ring, and this is the simmering, and this is just just the poaching and the gentle ring. So three different temperatures and a full-sized oven. And then at the bottom, something for warming the bread when you're, you're approving your doughs for making bread. So that was just a little resume there. I also mentioned chive butter. Now you can use fresh chives. We've got some in the garden at this time of year, lovely fresh chives. Um, a member of the onion family. So if you don't have chives, you can use a little bit extra leek or you could use some spring onion. Um, but we um, often have surplus. If you have chives, they tend to just go everywhere and go a bit wild. So what I do is I make up chive butter. I then slice it and put it in the freezer and I've got it all year round. So I've got instant, lovely, fresh chive butter. And here, I've just left this to show you. I make them into sausages, um, twist them in cling film, and then you can slice them up. And it's so easy and you've got medallions ready. This is dill butter, so different ones. I've got garlic butter as well from the Ramsons that you collect earlier in the year. So lots of Scottish ingredients, delicious flavours. So. That's the cullen skink underway and we need to crack on with the rest. So I had to put on a pan to heat there and a pan to heat here. And we're going to do some shellfish now. And I've got a lovely selection here, just a little selection. Some are in the pan already here. And I'm going to put in some of the um, dill butter this time. Just cut a little bit off here. And remember not to put in the cling film. About 25 grams. It's really effective um, and gives you instant lovely fresh butter. Now when you're cooking with butter it's good to remember to add just a tiny bit of rapeseed oil even if you're cooking in butter because it'll stop the butter from burning. So a little dash of Supernature which is harvested in Midlothian. Just a little bit just to stop it burning. And while we're at it, I'm just going to put a little bit in the frying pan as well, because that's where I'm going to cook my scallops. And here we've got some shellfish. So first of all, I've got some clams. Now I was going to get some Shetland mussels today, but um, the delivery didn't come. So I've got some clams already in the pan, and I'm going to add some more. And I think that's all the ones that are left here. Now, Shellfish should close when you when you clean them. So you just run them under the cold tap. If there's any little beards, we call them, you just pull them away. Same with mussels. And then you just pop the clams in the pan with the chive butter. Now it's a hot pan, so it's already starting to, to melt and I'm just going to add them in. Now we're going to also put some 
Here it is. This is this is one of my favourite pans, and I'm not on a pan advert here, no commission whatsoever. But a steamer is a really good plan. It's useful for all sorts of things. So I've got some lovely longer steam um, bodies here. These are also known as the Pitmoon prawns, so very appropriate for here in Fife. So they're going to take moments to cook. So they're just going to go straight into the um, steamer. And the scallops here, cracking gate great scallops, they are going to go in the, fra the pan and get sorted on a very high heat on both sides. So everything cooks very, very, very quickly. So this is just, just let that cook there, which it is. As soon as you've got your um, butter melted, what you're going to do next is add in the cider with your shells and your butter and let it steam. So that's what we want to do on a nice hot heat. So we'll put it onto the hottest heat here so it gets really fired up. And if I really want it hot, I open this little gizmo at the bottom here. Oh, very high tech. Who needs high tech when it works? <laughs> so I've got a little bit of cider, or you might have some white wine. Either is great. Slosh it in the pan there, and that will come up to heat very quickly. And on goes the longer steam. And they will cook in about three minutes in the top. But it's very important that all these layers are sealed up. The steam for the mussels and the clams, the, um, the steam for the longer steam and the lid on, all very important. So that's going to cook away. Now meanwhile we want a really really hot pan here for the for searing the um, scallops. Now the scallops can be seasoned, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt for the scallops. There we are. Now these are definitely king scallops. You get queenies as well that are a little bit smaller. Um, but equally delicious and they're very sweet and very meaty and some people um, prefer to not have the, the coral which is the roll on the side but I like it I don't have an issue with that at all now you can hear those crackling away in, way in there which is fantastic and this is coming up to a nice good heat as well you want your oil to be really runny not too much but just the rapeseed oil gives a roughly clean flavour, so it's you can take it to a high temperature and it and it doesn't spoil the flavour at all. It's lovely. So we'll just get these in the pan. Yes, that's what we want. <laughs> so we're only going to get two minutes per side. find that the coral will um, pop a little bit. It's got a little membrane. So we'll use the tip of a knife or the tip of something, just give it a little little pierce and then it won't pop the same way. It doesn't matter if it splits at all, but it's just so that you know. So we're going to give, not touch them for a couple of minutes uh, so they get a lovely golden edge on that side and then we flip them. Meanwhile, our soup is looking lovely. I'm going to move this up a little bit. And these I can hear, so it's time to give them a wee sugar. That's what you want to do. This little sugar is the name of the game here. So in your fish shop, you'll always find some lemon sole, some haddock, um, sometimes some salmon, some farm trout. Um, there's farm salmon, of course, but wild salmon is hard to find. But there's also lovely shellfish, and I think people sometimes are a bit wary of cooking them. But so long as they're lovely and fresh, I, I always cook them on the day I buy them. And discard any that, that don't snap shut, and um, discard any that haven't opened on cooking. And that's the golden rule. And apart from that, just buy them fresh from a, from a, a really responsible fishmonger and use them that day, and they're absolutely lovely. There's another shellfish that I haven't got today, which is very hard to get, um, called spoops which are these wonderful razor clams and about that long and you cook them exactly the same as you would do mussels or clams um, but most of them go to Spain or Portugal so they're hard to get. They get landed in, in Einster and Pitwin, but actually getting your hands on them you have to be there when the, when the boat's landed which we have which has been lovely. Now we'll just give them a little flip here 
If you move them too quick, they don't have that lovely colour, which these do. And the other golden rule about shellfish is not to overcook them. That's very important as well, not to overcook the shellfish. I've got some nice nasturtiums from the garden for a little garnish. Nasturtiums are lovely because you can actually eat the flower. The leaves are peppery. And even when the seeds form, you can pickle them and have Scottish capers. You can pickle them and use them as you would capers, pickled nasturtium seeds. They're really delicious. So all these things are, are local and all lovely. Now, this has come up beautifully steaming. This is our soup. Now at this stage, what you can do is you can lift out some of the ingredients uh, with a slotted spoon, put them to one side and puree the rest. So you've got a smooth soup with some nice little fishy bits for garnish in it. Um, so that it's entirely up to you whether that's the way you like it or if like us you're going to have it chunky tonight. So that's, uh, that's an, easy, an easy option there. It also freezes beautifully. Now I'm going to add a swirl of cream just to finish it off. And I'm keeping some cream for my shellfish, but you don't actually have to use cream in shellfish, but we, we do like our cream in this household. And here we have our coloured skink is ready. You can see that lovely hearty soup with the, with the potatoes and the leeks and the cream and that beautiful fish stock. So the next time you feel like a lovely warming soup in the autumn or the winter, think about getting a fin and haddie and think about doing a cullen skink because it really is delicious. Have it with some crusty bread, which uh, I think I've left upstairs, but I did make some lovely homemade bread. And we'll put a little bit of um, chives on the top. See that bread line around there? That was a pity. Anyway, some nice crusty bread with it is very good. And there we have common skink, our first dish. And our second dish, so very easy. I'm going to add a little bit of the dill butter just to finish off my scallops here. Just to swirl it around. Because it's rather delicious. to our cider. There we are. And our clams have opened up beautifully. And we'll add in our beautifully cooked longestines. Now, when you serve these, you do need to serve it with a finger bowl because you certainly get in a lovely mess with this one. it out into the dish and this you really do need some lovely crusty bread for because it's all deliciously creamy and juicy there we go I'll just pop some there I'm going to put some of the these lovely scallops on top There they are. Now with a nice little dill glaze on them, which is just delicious. And they go sitting on the top for a lovely seafood summer evening. These are all still in their prime. They're absolutely delicious. A little bit of the dill glaze on the top, like so. And finish off with a little bit of the peppery nasturtium. And there you have two Scottish fish dishes 
fit for a king. Enjoy! Well, wow, that was the third time I've watched that and um, I still feel hungry after it. I thought both those dishes were absolutely fantastic. Hopefully, uh, Wendy will be coming back to our studio um, to join us. Um, some really good uh, comments. I know Kevin had said that um, it, it was mouthwatering and Wendy made it look um, easy. <laughs> she does that sort of job. Um, we... We've got plans for our episode, our next episode, but what we don't have is any kind of further ahead from that. So I'm going to invite Wendy on just to tell us a little bit about what we're, what, uh, what Wendy's going to do for us in our next show. Uh, and then I'd love to hear from you and what you would like us to do for our December show. Uh, Wendy, welcome back. Thank you. I must say it was a very, very warm day and I hadn't quite decided if I was autumnal or whether I was still in summer. <laughs> so one winter dish and one and one summer dish. I know, I know, but that's Scottish weather for you, isn't it? Yeah, and and you can be honest with us. Did you cook the bread and leave it upstairs? Yes, yes. I made beautiful plaited rolls to impress you all and left them upstairs. Well, well maybe we'll have a a, a bread yes. uh, episode uh, next year. So, can you tell us a little bit about what you're planning to do for us uh, next month? Well, I thought seeing that there was still harvest and lots of vegetables in the ground, um, we, would, we would do a lovely seasonal vegetable one. There's still lovely leaves and brassicas and interesting vegetarian dishes. Um, so um, I know there's always people that didn't like fish, but um, we're going to have, have some greens next time. <laughs> and then we'll move on to meats and other things. And there's, there's just so many wonderful ingredients out there we can use. And I think um, whilst I would love to people hear people ideas for December um, or late November. I thought it should definitely have a festive feel because we're getting we're getting into the Rudolph and the you know the jingle bells era, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, and, and this year might have a very different festive feel than it did last year. Yes, yes. Yeah. So so we've got a few we've got a few comments which I'll put up. Um, so Wendy, that was amazing. Thank you for sharing. Loved it. Aww. Um, great name, went, great name from, yeah, from We Annie. Um, that's great. It would be, we would absolutely love to hear in the comments if you've tried any of those meals. Uh, it would be, it would be fantastic. And um, that'd be really good for us to hear that, wouldn't it, Wendy? Certainly, it's just lovely to hear people um, enjoying it and being with us. Thanks so much for taking the time on your busy evening. It's great to see you. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for um, for, for um, joining us tonight, and obviously for spending the time cooking that. Um, who got to eat it? Oh, we scoffed it. That that is that is the byproduct and the bonus of there you go. It's the you it's, love. <laughs> so 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 Ke Kevin and I, we can't feel that bad that Wendy's doing this for us because she doesn't. No get no no. Waste the, not, want not. Zero waste, zero waste in this house. So I hope <laughs> you'll all go to your local fishmonger, see what he's got. And uh, exactly, Tricia, your weekend sorted. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what, one question I did want to ask you before you go is about the freshness of the seafood. Uh, you said um, cook it the day that you get it, but obviously that's not practical for everyone. How? What? What difference does the food have? The kind of the freshness of seafood if you cook it the next day is it markedly different or only a little bit different? Isn't it? And is there anything you can do to keep? seafood that little bit fresher if you can't eat it the day that you buy it if you're buying um fish oily fish white fish um you can freeze them and they freeze beautifully so i always have a little bit of fish pie mix ready to go in the freezer it's the shellfish that's the issue because the shellfish are still living um and so you want them to be sounds a bit gory but you want them to be alive while while you while you have them and if they're dead you you can't cook them that's why you're looking for ones that will will close together as i'm sure you enjoy in spain um and uh, you want them to to snap open when they're cooked so it, it is really very very important the shellfish is very fresh you're going to a reputable fishmonger, um, you know, ask them at the counter, say, when did you get them in? And is it okay for me to cook them for tomorrow night? You know, have a conversation. And normally that will be okay, but just always ask the question. And it's shellfish that's the one to watch. Brilliant. That's really helpful. And we've got a comment here I'll just post up um, from Amina. Yes. 
Great. And, and that's what we're trying to do, isn't it? We're trying to cook as much seasonal Scottish produce as we can. Because there's so much out there. And I mean, I'm I'm not against a lemon, but it's it's great to use our produce and see how far we can take it. And there's so much we can do with it. And um, you know, I think we've we've all had the sort of school dinners with the overboiled cabbage, and we can do better than that here. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so the quote of the night for me is, um, "You're not against the lemon." I'm glad of that. <laughs> um, Wendy, thanks so much for joining us, and um, we'll see you round about the same time next month. A pleasure. Thank you. Happy cooking, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for your comments and your engagement. And until next month, see you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.